Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Saturday morning here in Australia, and unfortunately, the market is down again ever so slightly. We continue to just creep down slowly but surely. Still waiting to see if we've found the bottom, but you know, once we get to the Bitcoin chart, we'll have a look, and it's not looking great. But again, it doesn't mean it's looking awful, but yeah, it's not looking great. Uh, we'll just leave it with that for now. All right, so market is down almost under that $2.2 trillion mark, still holding above it, which is nice. Bitcoin dominance has fallen ever so slightly, so it's really just kind of ranging around that kind of 40% level. Not a lot of volume at the moment. It is down, but we have the weekend upon us. Sometimes you can see big pumps uh, on a Saturday or Sunday, uh, and it can really move the market because there's less volume. Volume. But again, I just get the feeling like there's still some nervousness in all markets uh, going around at the moment. And I just don't see it changing uh, in December, in all fairness. I think we'll continue to go down because, again, there's still a lot of people sold on Bitcoins, you know, could pump in December. And I'm not saying it can't. Number one, I never offer you financial advice for a start because I'm not a financial advisor. But that just was the narrative that everyone was so sure it was going to happen. And even I was, you know, thinking, yeah, look, it could happen. It's done it before. But that was really what kind of led me to think, you know, oh, I just don't know. Generally, if too many people are thinking something's going to happen in a market, it tends to not happen. Not always. Sometimes it does because the bigger players want it to play out a certain way. But yeah, at, in this sort of early stage in the market I just thought no I reckon something different is going to happen I think the four-year cycle has been broken now we are seeing whether it is a lengthening cycle or maybe it hasn't been broken and we did see the top and we're now in a bear market the thing is we're not going to know until much later that is the real problem and no one truly knows what's going to happen but yeah, again, once we get to the Bitcoin chart, I'll show you what I mean. But let's move on from that. ETH gas price is still fairly low. I haven't seen that in quite a long time. All right. Again, the market's down overall 3%. So you're going to see some downside. But what's done well? Because we can see, look, there we go. AVAX has done all right. All right, YFI. We got a story. YFI have actually came out and said that they're going to do an aggressive buyback program. And that's probably got something to do with the price going up now. You know, the guy who created uh, YFI and his whole team, they're probably pretty smart in regards to things like this. And are they doing this because they believe the bottom is sort of in or at least close? Considering YFI, I mean, it got right up there. I can't remember its all-time high, but it was a lot more than what it is. And it was down at just 19000 the other day. Where is it? There. It was down at $19,000, which is cheap for YFI. And now it's already pumped back up. So you can see right there it's had a bit of a move. And so we go over here up to 32,000. So that's quite a move. I'm just, you know, I'm in two minds about what I think of this. Is this something that they did to try and pump the price so they could sell a little bit more? I'm not quite so sure. But what they could do is be buying when it's nice and cheap. So we go back to this chart that they had there. Buy down here, we're buying back. And so it pumps it up and, you know, they might sell a little bit. I'm not saying it's a pump and dump or anything like that. But they, you know, maybe they're looking to kind of get some uh, profits. But also then have the market correct and buy back in cheaper. That is something that could be possible. And... There's another reason why I'm just a little bit unsure of, you know, the whole market space at the moment. So we go over here. Michael Saylor has laid out ways his firm could generate yield from its massive Bitcoin holdings. Now, not that long ago, Michael Saylor was saying you don't even need to do it. He wasn't going to lend it out or anything because he didn't need to because the price was just continuing to go up. Now that the price obviously isn't going up and it's had a real hard time getting back on an upwards trend, now he's talking about trying to find ways to make uh, passive income from his Bitcoin holdings. So this, again, makes me think maybe we are now in a bear market. It is absolutely possible. I'm not sold on it. I still don't believe it. But there's just things happening in the market and in the whole entire space that makes me think, you know, it's a definite possibility. Now, for me... I'm happy to buy Bitcoin at a discount. Again, I re, uh, rebalanced my portfolio a while ago. I've got a lot more cash sitting on the sides now. It's still a very small percentage. It's like 10% of my total sort of portfolio. But just in the off chance that we really are in a bear market and things continue to go down, well, I don't want to have all my money tied up in something that could lose 70 80%.
but you got to do you uh, I'm doing me and again I'm not making any massive moves at the moment a couple of interesting uh, other interesting stories that we'll get to very uh, that we'll get to sorry before we get to the Bitcoin chart all right number one polygon they just continue to put hundreds of millions of dollars into this whole entire sort of crypto space. So them and the co-founder of Reddit have pledged 200 million for Web3 social media and gaming. So they're really going big into this space. So, you know, part of the, and I don't want to say it's a problem, but it is sort of part of what's happening, is Polygon have been selling a lot of their, a lot of their tokens. Because they need to sell to be able to invest in other things. And so that's part of why Polygon really hasn't gone to any kind of crazy sky high levels is they have been selling quite a bit and obviously, you know, just giving their tokens as part of, um, you know, building projects and things like that. You know, they uh, bought Hermes, they bought Mir Protocol, they're looking to get into Optimism and all these other things. And they do that through the sale and distributing their tokens. And they've also, you know, added it, uh, for incentives on Aave and a whole stack of other things. Now, the good news is, though, they are building an absolutely unbelievable platform. Eventually, they won't have that many tokens left to constantly keep selling. And usually what happens is when the bear market comes is they will start to buy their own token again. That's what a lot of platforms have done previously. But we have to wait and see you know, what the long-term value of Polygon is. But for me... It is a long-term hold. I, I was lucky. I got a really good bag, a good-sized bag, really cheap. Uh, I've taken some profits and, you know, I can't even... I'd probably 10 x my money easily and I've still got a massive bag of it left. And that massive bag, I still have some that I plan to sell, uh, you know, if we get another pump. And if not, then I'm just going to let it all uh, continue to stake and sort of make money. Now, when I call it a big bag, it's a big bag to me. It's not a big bag <laughs> to you know some other people. They'd look at it and go, well, that's uh, not big. But for me, it's big. And so Polygon is something I plan on holding long term. I think it's going to be the number one layer two solution for Ethereum for quite some time. And if we are in a true bear market, then it's going to continue to stake all the way through until we get to the next... Uh, bull market and I'll be happy to buy more uh, if the price goes down and we hit a bear market but again I won't be going crazy because the issue is I've been around for a while I've seen tokens come and go and everything looks really good at the time you know we got Solana, Terra, uh, you know AVAX, Phantom and you know everything you know NEO is a perfect example EOS is a perfect example there are a number of other platforms that were out in the last one and you know they've basically sort of they're not dead but they've as good as died off tron was huge back in 2017 not a whole lot going there not a whole lot going on there sorry and justin sun has announced that he's uh, stepping down from tron at least full time he'd probably still be there in a part-time basis so that is another reason why you really want to take profits when you can and yes have moon bags but gee, don't get sold on uh, you know new cryptos that don't have years behind them and an obvious pattern of them growing, i.e. Ethereum. We really st still got to wait and see what Ethereum 2.0 is going to be like. But if it's anything like Polygon, well then it's got you know great things ahead of it. And if then Ethereum you know 2.0 rolls out and does well, then that is going to help expand Polygon as well because that means everything sort of worked. We're still not quite there yet. You know, we're all in limbo waiting to see what the final outcome will be. But I do think Polygon is one of those that's going to be a good long-term buy. Hence why I haven't sold a whole lot. I have sold some, like I said, and I think I've 10x my initial investment. But it's just because it did so well that I was able to 10x my initial investment and still have a massive bag left. But anyway, moving on, the next story. This I found very interesting as well. The SEC has delayed its decision on two more Bitcoin ETFs, and it's the Bitwise one, and more importantly, the Grayscale one. There's a lot of there's a you know a lot of people think that Grayscale have one of the largest amounts of Bitcoin out there. Full stop. They have a ton of it. So if a spot Bitcoin ETF was ever to be approved, you'd probably think it would be Grayscale. So they've been held back for 45 days. So that actually push, so that pushes it out into sort of next year, around sort of February, 
which is when I think we might see the bottoming formation if it plays out like I think it is and we continue continue seeing downward movement until maybe sort of February-ish and imagine then that a spot Bitcoin ETF gets approved and I'm not saying it's going to the SEC have been very reluctant to do that but I think that could be a catalyst to you know really just send the markets into a frenzy if next sort of February-ish, again, maybe early Jan, maybe late January, maybe sort of early February or, you know, sometime after, because they can push it out, I think, one more time again, push it out to 90 days, so it's another 45 days on top of that, which would then take it out to around about March, which would be very interesting. Oh, a little bit, yeah, March-ish, maybe sort of April, when a lot of people are thinking we might get you know some kind of sort of blow off top and again maybe that could do it so there's just there's so many things happening in the market it, it's really hard to kind of get a hold of where it's going at the moment but last but not least i want to go to the bitcoin chart and show you what we have here get out of there i don't need you so as i said this is what i suspected could happen now i'm not saying it is going to happen i just suspect look what it did it just set in a new lower low it was only ever so slightly, but now we are sitting right in this thing. So like I said, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. And it's just, it's mirroring it perfectly at the moment. Now again, not following these lines, but it, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I am, yeah, I, I just, I'm not, bullish at the moment i don't th look even if bitcoin does get to 32,000 33 and a half thousand again halfway between that i think we could still be in a bull market but i'm just not sure at the moment that's the problem that's why i'm not overly uh investing too much money into the market at the moment i'm waiting to see some kind of reversal and i just don't think we're going to get anything uh up until christmas i think again people are going to start to take profits if they haven't they're going to do uh tax losses and all those kind of things to even up the balance book and again you know they need to sell some to pay for their taxes and things like that so at the moment we're barely hanging on to the bottom of this range so I think this is almost a guarantee that Bitcoin's going to come down to about 41000 Now, as I've said before, I'm never offering you financial advice and I would be more than happy to be wrong about this because it means, you know, everything's going to continue to go down. Now, there's upside and downside to that. Downside is, yep, you're going to lose a lot. The good side is you can buy more cheaper. But for me, let's say Bitcoin does get down to, we'll go in the middle, sort of 41, let's say 41500 roughly thereabouts. I have my buy orders in for Bitcoin. Not a whole lot. I'm not going crazy, but I have a buy order in. It's not down here. It's actually more uh, just above this line because, you know, it might not even get there or it might just sort of wick down here and bounce. So I want to have an order in. If it gets filled, it doesn't get filled. It doesn't really matter. But if we do continue to come down into here, then it gets filled and I've bought Bitcoin at, Again, let's say roughly 42,400, thereabouts. I can't remember the exact number I put in off the top of my head. That is near half price, not quite half price, a little bit over, but not too far off half price from its old all-time high. That's the 50% correction right there. I don't mind buying Bitcoin at that price. Now, if we are in a true bear market, is $42,000 going to be cheap for Bitcoin? No, unfortunately it's not but I'm not buying, I'm not throwing all my cash at it. I then have another uh, buy order in, somewhere sort of just around about here, you know, 37,000, you know, 650 or something like that. Again, I don't have it in front of me, I can't remember, but just a little bit above this line. Now, could it go lower? Absolutely. Where I am putting an order in is around this kind of CME gap. So 34,500, I would have a buy order in just above that. Now, again, it could go lower. It might go right into halfway. It might go even below. Still not throwing all my cash out of cash at Bitcoin if it manages to get to here. Because the scary part is, I think if it does get to, down to here and it does it by sort of January-ish, February-ish, and then we get that spot Bitcoin ETF news, I think that will be the V-shaped recovery. And that is what I'm thinking could happen. I'm not 100% sold on what happens because the scary part is if it gets down to here and we don't get the V-shaped recovery and it doesn't mean it has to do it right at 32,500, it could wick just below again, maybe have a big wick to get even below 30,000. But if we don't get the V-shaped recovery from 
getting all the way down here, then unfortunately we are in a bear market. And we'd really be looking at somewhere around about sort of, some people are saying here the kind of 24-ish thousand dollar mark uh, would be a good place to find support. But I think we're probably sort of coming down somewhere around about sort of here. 13, 12, 11, sort of 10,000. Somewhere around about here is where I think the bottom would be. But look, never financial advice. I don't know what's going to happen. No one truly knows what's going to happen. We're all just, you know, sort of guessing based on time in the markets and things that TA uh, are telling us. But like I've said before with TA, is TA is good until it's not it's not an exact science so you really have to do your own research and come up with your own thesis my thesis is i don't really think we're going to go below 32 and a half thousand dollars like at least not on big major closes i think we could have you know some big massive wick if we get down to here that pushes below thirty thousand. but then i think we get a v-shaped recovery if we make it down to here but if we do make it down to here then really anything's you know open and especially the fact that all right we are in a bear market and we've been in a bear market since here <sighs> i don't know what the answers are though ladies and gentlemen i can only give you my thesis as my thought process we could absolutely turn around from here and come monday or even sometime over this weekend we're off to the races and i would love for that to happen I just don't see that happening at the moment. I don't see any kind of bullish news and all the other markets are doing the same at the moment. There's just fear and panic, but that is usually when things turn around. It's just, are we at enough fear and panic to turn around or are we not quite there yet? Max pain is what they talk about. All right, that's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe, be kind to one another pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment but if you are congratulations to you because you've outplayed the market and i'll see you next time